Hey guys, how's it going? It's General Heat here, and today we've got a special video to show you, and that is 10 things you probably never noticed in Halo 2. Now these are uh, things like you know, kind of small, and they're not necessarily they're not like new glitches or Easter eggs. They're not meant to be either. There's kind of you know things that you might have overlooked uh, in Halo 2 uh, that you know you never would have noticed otherwise. Kind of just small things here and there, but. Without further ado, the first one with number 10 is Johnson's floating hat. Uh, at the beginning of the mission Cairo station, you see his hat just sitting on a crate here. If you were to punch the crate away, his hat would still be floating. In fact, his hat's not even a solid object. It's just kind of a uh, floating object there uh, with no colliders or anything. Uh, so yeah, that's the first simple thing that you might not have noticed. You might have just thought that the hat was just solid and just actually sitting on the crate, but it's not. It's actually floating over it. So with number nine, we have uh, living dead bodies. Uh, most of these can be found on the mission uh, Sacred Icon, uh, and it's only wor it only works on brutes. So if you look at the dead bodies, you know they look dead, but if you melee them just punch the bodies they actually blink which is actually kinda creepy uh... cause you know they're supposed to be dead but for some reason if you punch the bodies uh... they they still flinch for some reason on um, both anniversary and classic mode and uh... normally when you punch bodies um, on most enemies they don't in halo 2 they don't move they're actually just like solid on the ground I know in later Halo games like Halo 3 and newer when you punch bodies they actually bounce around like with ragdolls but not on Halo 2 so that's why it's kinda weird now here on this mission um, when you come to this one and grab the energy sword you hear an elite talk that's saying uh, the brutes betrayed us and everything but you don't actually see who talks it is that elite on the ground there that talks but his mouth doesn't move so that glitch with the brutes it works on the elite uh, so if you punch him when you grab the sword, as he talks, his mouth actually moves now, which again is kind of creepy that <laughs> the dead bodies can still talk or like blink, but it's just something you probably never noticed. Now with number eight, uh, this one's not really like a glitch or anything at all, or an Easter egg. It's just something. Um, it's just something kind of funny to do that. Um, <laughs> like you're, you shouldn't be able to do <laughs> but uh, on this part of the mission uh, after uh, you get the uh, right before the airlock you need to uh, save Johnson and Miranda from all these elites and grunts once you clear the enemies uh, just head back to them but let's clear them really quickly first so as the title suggests we are basically going to vent uh, Johnson or Miranda Keys down to space. Actually, you can use any Marines, but they won't survive this method. So, you're going to want to just melee uh, Miranda Keys or Johnson. If you do with a regular Marine, they'll die after a few melees. But you want to get them all into the airlock. I messed up with Miranda Keys, so I cut to here. My friend succeeded with Johnson. But, kind of like the Saving Sergeant Johnson glitch on Halo 3, like saving him all the way if you saw my video. If you melee him to the end, he actually keeps running back to the beginning, so which is pretty annoying. And that's what happens here too. Uh, if you try to melee Miranda Keys or Johnson, they they try to run back to the beginning. But fortunately, the distance to melee is nowhere near as long as uh, on Halo 3, so it's actually a lot easier on Halo 2. But right now, as you can see, the airlock is open, and we already exposed the vacuum in space, and we basically pushed Johnson out, totally exposed, unprotected into the vacuum of space and he is still alive without any uh, negative <laughs> side effects to him like I said this is just not like a, it's not like a glitch or anything it's just kind of funny that you can actually push Johnson out into space and he could still be alive uh, even though you shouldn't be able to but yeah so for number seven uh, this is um, kind of an interesting thing uh, I guess Bunch never fully accounted for this, but if you play as the Arbiter and you come into some friendly Marines, especially with Johnson here, and you get up close, you actually think you are a chief. Check your fields, chief. Oh, 
Focus, Chief. So yeah, as you just heard there, Johnson still thinks that Arbiter is uh, Master Chief, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but I guess Bungie just... You don't encounter friendly Marines often as an elite, so I guess they just never account for that. Now for number 6, this is something that only uh, happens in Halo 2 Anniversary. But let's use the cutscene as an example here. In this cutscene you clearly see an elite dual wield. And it's the same in classic mode. But um, it doesn't matter if you play in classic or anniversary, once the cutscene ends... And this doesn't just happen on this mission, this happens on pretty much every mission. And every moment in the in gameplay when an elite is supposed to be dual wielding, they are not dual wielding. See, none of the elites here are dual wielding. But there are there are several instances in Halo 2 gameplay in the old versions where some elites were guaranteed to always be dual wielding, no matter what. No matter what difficulty, no matter what conditions, they will always be dual wielding. But in Halo 2 Anniversary, like even on this mission, this elite here should be dual wielding. He is not. So on Halo 2 Anniversary, for some like weird bug or something, um, None of your elite allies ever dual wield. So here is uh, this is Halo 2 PC, uh, and this it'd be the same as Halo 2 Xbox. But see here, that elite is always dual wielding. And we're gonna switch to the other uh, mission in a second. But basically, uh, all these elites should always be dual wielding, no matter what. And this is something that's like easy to like forget. Uh, I actually never even noticed this for a while until somebody pointed out to me that uh, elites don't dual wield anymore. Uh, and I thought it was strange. I was like, wait, no way. They must have. But I, I, I just simply never noticed this. So this is definitely one thing that you probably never noticed either. Now, for number five, this is uh, something that uh, I actually never noticed until recently either. But if you... Uh, turn on like Sputnik and Feather Skull and Boom Skull to make this a lot easier. If you keep shooting the Prophet of Regret, like not directly, but like around him, hitting him with like explosives, uh, you can actually like flip him over and basically knock him out of his uh, throne, or as I like to say, dethroning him literally. And when he falls out, uh, something even more interesting happens, which you will see in a second. Well, actually, you would know it based on the title of this particular uh, trick, but <clears throat> let's take a look. So there we go, we've knocked him out, and he actually just falls out. And he has a plasma pistol that he actually shoots you with. And But after a little bit, he'll teleport back into his throne, and everything will be back to normal. But he actually carries a plasma pistol, and once you kill him, he actually does drop that plasma pistol. But... Like me, most of you probably never noticed him dropping that plasma pistol, or have never actually knocked him out of his chair before. But let's uh, kill him one more time, and then you can see him uh, drop his plasma pistol. <clears throat> now what's even more interesting is that apparently that plasma pistol is supposed to be like a reference to uh, Halo lore, where like the Regret had some kind of like special plasma pistol that he used on uh, people, or as like a personal weapon. I don't exactly remember the story behind it, but... Apparently it's like related to that, so, so it's pretty interesting. Now for number four, uh, this is the friendly brute army. Uh, so on this mission, uh, the final mission, after you uh, pass the uh, scarab with Johnson, uh, you might have seen my other videos of the friendly brute, uh, but. What you might not have noticed is that not only are like the brutes and the uh, the wraith uh, friendly because they're weaponless, but all the brutes actually in all the vehicles on this mission. Well, actually, not all the vehicles, not the specters, just the uh, the banshees and the wraiths. Uh, if you were to hijack the banshee and you knock a brute out, and this hap this applies to all banshees on this mission, <clears throat> but if you do that. All of them that come out will be weaponless, and they won't attack you. They may follow you around, but they will never attack you. Now, this is probably, um, like me, again, most of you probably don't bother coming down here and hijacking banshees. You probably just 
uh, try to speed run this part or you just wait for Johnson to come by and you stay in your own Banshee you know no trouble but for those of you that have tried to hijack a Banshee then maybe you have noticed this but I never really noticed this until like somewhat recently but if you keep doing this uh, you might notice that Banshees keep flying in almost infinitely well not infinitely if you do this glitch but you, uh, quite a few do fly in and after a while you can get like quite a large number of weaponless brutes that will just follow you around and never attack you. Kind of like that weaponless uh, elite army on Halo Reach in a previous video I did like a couple days ago. It's basically the same principle. See the elites will try to follow you. They won't run at you like the elites do on uh, the Halo Reach video but it will just follow you and pretty much stalk you the entire time. Now we first notice this while trying to do uh, a small glitch where we try to get like an infinite number of like brutes to try to do like a little weaponless brute army or brute island thing like the marine island in Halo 3. But <clears throat> it didn't work because the brutes stopped spawning. It's not the banshees that keep coming in, it's actually the brutes that keep coming in. If we have a certain number of brutes still here, there won't be any new banshees coming in. So yeah, that's basically it for the friendly brute army. Now on to number three. We are getting close to our number one thing that you probably never noticed. But for the number three uh, thing that you never noticed, probably never noticed, is uh, during this cutscene in classic mode on Halo 2, uh, at the beginning of Outskirts, if you look very closely as the Warthogs are driving, which we're about to get to, if you look very closely, all of these Warthogs have no driver in them and no passenger or gunner uh... so they're basically kind of ghost warthogs and this actually uh... is not too uncommon in like halo games uh... i believe there are like other missions where pelicans and other vehicles have no pilot or drivers but in this case it's just pretty it's kind of funny in like such an obvious scene it's such an important scene you don't see any drivers in them and it's really easy to miss because it happens so quickly. Now, number two is a secret cut dialogue in uh, the cutscene on the Arbiter. Um, <clears throat> you have to have your subtitles on to be able to see this. But here, as he's giving the speech, in just a moment, uh, the elites will respond to uh, something he says. And there will be a little bit of dialogue that you see in the subtitles, but that they don't speak in the actual game. So right here it says we shall grind them in the dust, but in the subtitles it further says scrape them as excrement from our boots. You actually, you obviously don't hear that in the actual cutscene. Uh, but it's cut dialogue, just like in Halo Reach, there's uh, the mission, at the end of the mission, New Alexandria, there's quite a bit of cut dialogue that you see in the cuts, in, in a subtitle for the cutscenes. <coughs> But you don't actually hear in the game unless you actually mod the uh, extracted dialogue out. Uh, now in Halo 2 Anniversary, they actually removed that uh, extra bit of uh, cut dialogue from the subtitles. And unfortunately, as far as I know, that cut dialogue does not exist in the game anymore like it did in Halo 1. And finally, our number one thing that you might not have noticed. Actually, uh, a lot of people might have noticed this. Uh, but a lot of you, a lot of people I talk to have not either. But I still like to consider this the number one thing because I don't know. It's just like one of my favorite things in Halo 2 to show people. Uh, but if you come over here on the map Tombstone in multiplayer, and you carefully walk on this ledge here, and you zoom in on the ground there, you can actually see a Halo 1 pistol just sitting there, out of reach. It is definitely the Halo 1 pistol, because if you look at my Halo 2 pistol, it looks completely different. It is definitely the Halo pistol from Halo 1, I think it was the M6D or M6C, I forgot exactly what it was, but that's the Halo 1 pistol. It is actually not a real pistol, it's just a, uh, like an unusable object, um, like a little model. But, you know, it's still pretty cool that they hit it there, uh, but obviously it's not a real weapon, you can't use it no matter what, even if you mod your way in. But yeah, so that's uh, that's a little little stick put together of things that I think you know some of you might not have noticed before. 
And I do hope you guys found it interesting. And if you do, uh, make sure to uh, leave a like, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments, or if there's any other things you want to share that you think other people might not have noticed, uh, do uh, share that with us. And you know, I think we'll find it interesting as well as other people. And of course, as always, if you have not subscribed to us yet, please do so. We really appreciate it, and we have a lot of other cool content to share with you guys soon. And other than that, um, we shall see you guys next time. Hey guys, sorry, it looks like I forgot to uh, tell a pun in this video. So I'm going to tell you guys a quick one uh, before we end the video. Uh, so apparently when a clock gets hungry, it goes back four seconds. Get it? It goes back four seconds. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> that's, uh, that's all for today. And we'll have more puns in our next video, so stay tuned.